But now, the men of Morgoth have assembled their forces, and seven dragons of fire are come with orcs about them, and balrogs upon them, down all the way from north, east, and west, seeking the square of the king. Then there was carnage at the barriers, and de Galmoth and Tior went from place to place of the defense, but Ecthelion lay by the fountain, and that stand was the most stubborn valiant that is remembered in all the songs or in any tale. Yet as long last a drake bursts the barrier to the north, and there had once been the issue of the Alley of Roses, and a fair place to see or to walk in. But now there is but a lane of blackness, and it is filled with noise. Tior stood then in the way of that beast, but was sundered from a galmoth, and they pressed him backward, even to the center of the square, nigh the fountain. There he became weary from the strangling heat, and was beaten down by a great demon. Even Gothmog, Lord of Balrogs, Lieutenant of Morgoth. But lo, Ecthelion, whose face was of the pallor of grey steel, and whose shield arm hung limp at his side, strode above him as he fell. And that gnome did drive at the demon, yet did not give him his death, getting rather a wound to his sword arm that his weapon left his grip. Then leapt Ecthelion, lord of the fountain, fairest of the Noldor, full at Gothmog. Even as he raised his whip and his helm that had a spike upon it, he drave into the evil beast, and he twined his legs about his foeman's thighs, and the Balrog yelled and fell forward, but those two dropped into the basin of the king's fountain which was very deep. There found that creature his bane, and Ecthelion sank, steel-laden, into the depths. And so perished the lord of the fountain, after fiery battle, in cool waters. Now Tior had arisen when the assault of Ecthelion gave him space, and seeing that great deed he wept for his love of that fair gnome of the fountain, but being wrapped in the battle, he scarce cut his way to the folk about the palace. There, seeing the wavering of the enemy by reason of the dread of the fall of Gothmog, the marshal of the hosts, the royal house laid on, and the king came down in splendor among them, and hewed with them, that they swept again much of the square, and of the Balrog slew even two score, which is a very great prowess indeed. But greater still did they do, for they hemmed in one of the fire drakes, and for all his flaming, and forced him into the very waters of the fountain that he perished therein. Now this was the end of that fair water, and its pools turned to steam, and its spring was dried up, and it shot no more into the heaven, but rather a vast column of vapor arose to the sky, and the cloud therefrom floated all over the land.